subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening welcome to south asia news line i'm lepakshi khurana Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. India to start economic partnership talks with Bangladesh, says PM Modi. Seven MOUs inked to bolster ties. Pakistan struggles to avert danger as floods rise. The death toll tops 1,300. And Sri Lanka's 22nd constitutional amendment gets clearance from the Supreme Court. Now for all the details, India will start talks on a comprehensive economic partnership agreement with Bangladesh. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Tuesday, after holding talks with his Bangladeshi counterpart Sheikh Hasina, who is on a four-day visit to India. Seven MOUs, issues related to water sharing, railways, space, and science, were inked to further strengthen India-Bangladesh partnership. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who is on a four-day visit to India, was on Tuesday welcomed by her Indian counterpart Narendra Modi at the Rashtrapati Bhavan Presidential Palace in capital New Delhi. She was accorded a ceremonial reception at the forecourt of the Presidential Palace, during which she recalled India's contribution in Bangladesh's liberation war. PM Modi and Hasina later held bilateral talks at Hyderabad House to review and further strengthen. the all encompassing india bangladesh partnership delegation level talks were also held between the two countries led by the two leaders issues related to connectivity energy water resources trade and investment border management and security development partnership and regional and multilateral matters were held during the meeting india and bangladesh signed seven memorandums of understanding on issues related to water sharing railway space science and judiciary PM Modi and PM Hasina jointly unveiled and announced several projects including unit 1 of the Maitri Super Thermal Power project the 5.13 km Rupsha rail bridge which is a key part of the 64.7 km Kulna Mongla port broad gauge rail project India also extended nearly 9.5 billion US dollars to Bangladesh in concessional loans and is taking up several connectivity projects Addressing a joint press conference with the Bangladeshi Prime Minister, PM Modi said India will start talks on a comprehensive economic partnership agreement (CAPA) with Bangladesh. Bangladesh के निर्यात के लिए आज भारत पूरे एशिया में सबसे बड़ा मार्केट है। इस वृद्धि को और गति देने के लिए हम द्विपक्षीय कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव इकोनॉमिक पार्टनरशिप एग्रीमेंट पर शीघ्र चर्चा शुरू करेंगे हमने आईटी, अंतरिक्ष और न्यूक्लियर एनर्जी जैसे सेक्टर में भी सहयोग बढ़ाने का निश्चय किया बोथ कंट्रीज हैव बीन इन्वॉल्व इन अ जॉइंट स्टडी ऑन द सी पी ए विच हैज बीन इन डिस्कशन बिटवीन द टू नेबर्स फॉर मेनी ईयर्स Bangladeshi Prime Minister expressed hope that the issue of Tista water sharing with India would be resolved soon. This is Hasina's first visit after both nations' bilateral relations touched their 50th year in 2021. And moving on, several areas of India's tech hub of Bengaluru were inundated for a second day on Tuesday after more rainfall lashed the city. The severe water logging disrupted daily activities, led to traffic chaos along with power and water supply cuts. Several parts of India's tech hub of Bengaluru in Karnataka state were under water for a second day on Tuesday as more rain lashed the city bringing traffic chaos and power and water supply cuts amid a flood like situation traffic moved slowly on heavily water logged roads as people struggled to reach their workplaces amidst the chaos some people also hopped on to tractors to reach their destinations the city home to various global companies as well as home grown startups has received 162% more rainfall than average since the beginning of the wet season on june 
Many companies have asked staff to work from home. And for going like six kilometers, it will take two, three hours, right? It's really not possible three hours to go. And then come back, you don't know in the evening if it starts raining, the bus service might stop, anything can happen, right? So the situation is really not good. The India Meteorological Department has warned of more rainfall till September 9 in parts of Karnataka, raising fears of further disruptions throughout the week. A yellow alert has also been issued for Bengaluru and several other districts. And nearly a third of Pakistan is underwater, driven by months of relentless rain and by extreme spring heat that accelerated the melting of glaciers, an area the size of the United Kingdom affecting 33 million people and killing 1,300 people. While rescue efforts continue, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Monday visited flood-affected areas and inspected relief activities in worst-hit Sindh province. Thousands of people stranded in towns and villages across Pakistan's southern Sindh province were rescued by authorities after unprecedented flooding submerged their homes on Monday. Pakistani authorities are struggling to prevent the country's biggest lake, Manchar, bursting its banks and inundating nearby towns, while the Disaster Management Agency on Monday added further 24 fatalities to its death toll. Pakistani Navy and non-profit organizations conducted rescue operations in Kharpur, Nathan Shah city, ferrying people to displaced pin camps after the extreme weather rendered them homeless. Record monsoon rains and melting glaciers in Pakistan's northern mountains have brought floods that have affected 33 million people and killed at least 1,314, including 458 children, Pakistan's National Disaster Management Agency said. छटा देना है हमें हम लोग सबसे पहले दिन जो है वो तकरीबन चार दिन पहले हम लोग यहाँ पे गाड़ी चला रहे थे इस रोड पे जिस रोड पे अब कश्ती चला रहे हम और यहाँ से हमने गोजो आगे छोव से बंदे निकाले थे अब तो हमें खैरपुर नाथन शाह से भी बंदे निकालने पड़े हमने टोटल इन पांच दिनों में तकरीबन कोई 1100 से 1200 लोग तक जो है वो शहर के अंदर से अलग गांव के अंदर से निकाल के रेस्क्यू करके उनको जो है हमने महफूज मकाम पे पहुंचाया है Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Monday visited a flood relief camp set up in Kambar Shadat Kot in the hardest hit Sindh province of Pakistan where he inspected the relief activities and interacted with affected people. The floods have led to a growing humanitarian crisis and the United Nations has called for 160 million US dollars in aid to help the victims of the floods but Finance Minister Miftah Ismail said the cost of the damage was far higher than that. Modern news from Pakistan. Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan's comments about the appointment of the next army chief have sparked a widespread backlash with the military firmly rejecting the remarks as defamatory. Khan in a public rally this weekend had said that if a patriotic chief of army staff is appointed, he will not spare the incumbent rulers who are accused of corruption. The Pakistan Army in a statement has expressed displeasure over former Prime Minister and Opposition PTI Party Chairman Imran Khan's recent comments about the appointment of the next Army Chief and said it was aghast over it and termed them defamatory. In a public rally in Faisalabad on Sunday, Khan had called out the government leaders saying they are delaying the elections to appoint an army chief of their choice and that if a patriotic chief of army staff comes in, he will not spare the incumbent rulers who are accused of corruption. Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif in a tweet said that Imran's despicable utterances to malign institutions were touching new levels every day. The ruling coalition led by PML and party in a joint statement termed the remarks an attempt to pit the public and the army against each other. Army Chief General Kamar Javed Bajwa is set to retire in November and the process for appointment of his successor is set to begin soon. Criticism of the powerful military which has directly ruled the country for almost half its nearly 75-year history is seen as red line in Pakistan. Although it denies interference in politics, reports suggest Imran Khan was ousted from Prime Minister's post in April after he had lately lost army support. And in news from Afghanistan, two Russian embassy staff in Kabul were among six people killed when a suicide bomber detonated explosives near the entrance of the embassy in a blast that injured at least 10 others on Monday. The attack was claimed by Islamic State militant group. Survivors who are being treated in Kabul hospital recalled the moment blast went off near the embassy. 
Survivors of a suicide bomb recalled on Monday the moment the blast in which six people were killed near the Russian embassy in Kabul. Two Russian embassy staff in Kabul were among six people killed when a suicide bomber detonated explosives near the entrance of the embassy. In the blast that injured at least 10 others, the Russian foreign ministry and Afghan officials said on Monday. The attack was claimed by Islamic State militant group on its channel on Telegram. Police said the attacker was shot dead by armed guards as he approached the gate in one of the first such attacks since the Taliban took power last year. Russia is one of the few countries to have maintained an embassy in Kabul after the Taliban took over Afghanistan. Although Moscow does not officially recognize the Taliban's government, they have been in talks with officials over an agreement to supply gasoline and other commodities. The United Nations mission in Afghanistan, UNAMA, condemned the blast. The spokesperson for the foreign ministry in Afghanistan said, Taliban forces would take serious steps towards securing embassies operating in the country. Afghanistan's acting foreign minister Amir Khan Muttaki expressed his condolences to his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov and assured him of comprehensive investigations in this regard. During the decades-long Taliban insurgency against the Western-backed Afghan government, bombings targeting foreign missions were a regular occurrence in Kabul. Such incidents have decreased dramatically since the insurgent group swept to power in August 2021. However, the Taliban has had to contend with an insurgency by the Afghanistan affiliate of the Islamic State militant group. The attacks had thus far been against the Taliban and civilian targets such as mosques. And moving on to news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's Supreme Court has cleared the bill seeking the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution, ruling that it can be adopted with a two-thirds majority in Parliament and some clauses requiring a nationwide referendum. Speaker Mahinda Yapa Abhivardhana said on Tuesday, the legislation is aimed at trimming presidential powers, a key demand of protesters calling for political reforms and solutions to the country's worst economic crisis. The crisis came to a head in July when the then president, Gotabaya Rajpaksa, who was accused of economic mismanagement, fled the country and resigned after a public uprising. Rajapaksa had concentrated power on himself after being elected to office in 2019. The bill proposed by the government of incumbent president, Ranil Vikramasinghe aims to help shore up stability and defuse the unrest due to the crisis. While artists in India's southern Kerala state painted faces of tigers and panthers on their bellies and wore animal masks on Monday as they danced to the beat of drums to mark 10-day-long celebrations of Harvest Festival Onam. The festival is being celebrated in a grand manner after a two-year COVID-induced hiatus. Celebrations of the 10-day-long Harvest Festival Onam are underway in full swing in India's southern Kerala state. Artists in Tiruvananthapuram city on Monday performed Puli Kali, a folk dance to mark the annual festival, painting faces of tigers and panthers on their bellies and wore animal masks as they shook their legs to the beat of drums. Onam is celebrated in honour of King Mahabali under whom the state had witnessed its golden period. It is believed that the king visits Kerala from the netherworld during these 10 days to see if his people are living happily. The celebrations come after a two-year COVID-induced hiatus. Meanwhile, flower seals saw a hike in Koteam as floral decorations form a major part of Onam celebrations. Onam is greatly awaited across Kerala, often referred to as God's own country, as it is believed the Harvest Festival heralds prosperity and happiness in the society. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.